So here we are with this growth stage on wheat. Okay, and what we did is four or five years ago, we put together what we call a crop nutrient calculator. And what it's saying is, is if I want to come up here, and let's say on your chart here, we've got 100 bushel wheat, right? That's a lofty goal for dry land, okay? And with some little rain, we're going to get her this year, all right? 100 bushel wheat, what does it take? I have so many nitrogen units, so many phosphate units, so many potassium units, and so many sulfur units per bushel. I just multiply that and it gives me a number over here. And then this is the plant's physiological demand for nutrition. This is when it's got to be made available in a soluble form for this plant to do what it's designed to do. And the better we get the nutrition there in the form of the plant that can use it, the better our grain yields are. The plant will tell us, give us a report card. Okay? So, and what we do is, as we look at this, we can take the mineral content out of a soil, plug it into the calculator, set the bushels, and then this will give us our number of units of or nitrogen at this point, potassium here, our phosphate doesn't come in till tillering, we have a little bit of sulfur, but we have more nitrogen and potassium. But look at stem elongation. Now, this is common in almost all the plants that we've looked at. Corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, everything. Alfalfa is this way. We always, you usually cut it for feed before it goes to seed. Mike? How about pulse scripts? Pulse crops are the same way. Same way. Same way. They're going to follow this pattern pretty close, and we're going to produce one of these for pulse crops, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say on the dry land last year with the amount of rain that we had, you know, in this area here, like 10 inches, we had a 430 acre field, 115 acres out of the field with 95 bushel winter wheat. That's Wonderful. The others for uh, 300 and some was 86. What would be the difference? Okay, we'll go into that when we get the soil. Don't let me forget that, okay? Because we think, another thing that we often think is, is my fields are the same from side to side. I promise you they are not. Nature is an amazing blender, but they're not uniform. You can go, let's take a 100 acre field. If we broke it into 10 acre parcels and sent the same, sent all 10 soil samples in, you will come back with 10 very different numbers. Very different numbers. And so your response is, well, how did my plant access those minerals? Okay, some parts of your field like, we'll have guys in the Midwest, we got some guys that are playing around with corn, doing a pretty good job. They'll have parts of their field at 450, 480 bushel. And then they'll have parts of their field at 300. It's the soil. We got slopes, we got draws, we got bare side hills. Okay, we've got bleach soils. Okay? We have a lot of different types of soil structures. We'll go from clays to loams in the same field. How do you fix that? Microbes. Mike. Or move. I have a guy that grows 2,000 acres of alfalfa and he was constantly complaining about his soil type. And he says, how can I fix this? How can I fix this? And I finally said, Brent, move. Just move. What, what if you, do, you can't move? <laughs> Most guys can't move. So how is the least expensive way to deal with these imbalances? Because nature does not put things in evenly. Okay, so here comes the challenge. All right, so we'll, but don't go away from that. We're gonna come back to that, okay? So whatever crop we decide we're gonna grow, we're putting the calculators together to say, okay, what is the diet of this plant? If I'm going to get there, what do I have to do to support this plant to do it? 
because the programming is already there. The only thing that is absent is how the resources get to it. And that's, that's our job, okay? So we've got 150 bushel wheat. Under irrigation, we have a lot of guys doing 150 bushel wheat. We have a lot of guys doing 200 plus oats, okay? It's, and, and you know, I remember Ed over here. He, two years ago, he called me and he says, and, and I think, hey Leonard, how are you? He said, he said, I've got a five and a half inch head with 99 kernels in it. And I go, Ed, that's terrible. He goes, what are you talking about? He says, that's a huge head. I said, Ed, you still lost two thirds of them. That was the potential of the plant. I still, even at 100 kernels per head, which is well over 200 bushel, we still lost two-thirds of them. But I said, Ed, that's really good. That is really good. Okay? And especially if you've got the protein content, you've got the test weight. So, our best test weight on wheat is 68 pounds. That's not bad. Our best proteins are at 18. Right? We're getting better at what we do. Is, is 68 pounds the best we can do? Is that all God designed that plant to do? No, it's not. Do you know the potential we get out of our plants is probably, on average, somewhere less than 20% of the potential that's there. Less than 20%. A lot of them are 10 to 15%. So, it isn't a problem with the engineering, it's more of a problem with the management. That gets to be us, okay? So, oats, this is the requirement for oats. Now, come back here. I wanted to make a point of this. It doesn't matter what you're growing, barley, wheat, oats, any of your cereal grains, any of your corn, any of your soybeans, any of your lentils or your pulse products, okay, chickpeas, right here. Remember, what was happening at stem elongation? What was the plant deciding at stem elongation? Right at the end, just before booting, what happened right here? What's that? Grain yield. Grain yield. The plant starts aborting. It says, I am going to kick off what I can't keep. As we started researching this, Every crop has a major, major potassium spike just before it sets yield. Okay? So, you guys, let's just have a one minute fun with corn here. Okay? Okay, you guys are either growing corn or your colonies are buying corn. Okay, we got cinnamon rolls back there. And, and they're just hot as can be, right Abe? Uh, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Okay, corn at V3, that means that this little plant has come up out of the ground and I have three leaf stages. This is when it determines how many kernels I put around the cob. And they're always even. So am I going to put 12 rows around? 14, 16, 18, 22, 24. Okay? And this lasts to V5, and then that window closes. Okay, you have five days and no more than that to determine whether I get 12, 16, 20 rows. Provided the moisture is there. Provided there's moisture. Okay? Always provided there's moisture, Mike. From V12 to V17, which is no longer than 10 to 14 days. If the weather's bad, you can get 14. If the weather's good, you'll get 10. It sets 
the number of kernels down the ear. Okay, so am I going to be 30 kernels, 40, 50, 60? Okay, the plant decides what's going to happen right here. Now, right here at this point at V10 to V12, there is a massive, massive potassium spike. Corn and wheat will take up almost 50% of their potassium uptake within two weeks. And if it's not there, guess what it does? <coughs> Aborts. 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 Your Kinsey, you probably knew Kinsey. Uh huh. Uh, on your nitrogen, you know, it says the amount. Mm -hmm. Then it's the desired value of sulfate, phosphate, calcium, manganese, manganese, potassium. Some of them got over surplus and some not quite. How do you fix the over surplus? We grow more crops. <laughs> grow what? Grow more crops. Grow bigger crops. What, what if they aren't balanced? We, we can fix some of that, okay? They're, they're never balanced. I mean, when we look at these soil reports, they were never balanced. They're, 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 they're never in balance. I think something happened between the Garden of Eden and the real world. It's like, things were pretty cool in the Garden of Eden. But when we got into the real world, I think things got messed up a little bit. However, the, there are no perfect soils. I promise you, we look at thousands of soil reports every year. And so a guy gets his soil report back and he goes, oh, this is dreadful. And I said, guess what? Everyone else's is too. They're just dreadful in a different way. But it's at least we get a chance to come in and start working with them to fix them. And we're going to talk about this that, because... That's where the soil texture comes in. Mm -hmm. soil. It does. And so we can modify that. Okay, so just be aware that in just before everything goes into like in your vegetables. Okay, like Leonard, you guys that are gardeners, before your plants, as they start this young stage and they start to go into production and determine, okay, Leonard, there's a reason you get five cucumbers per plant or 25 cucumbers per plant, isn't there? Okay. It's all based on what nutrition that plant gets. And so every plant is taken up. Oh, Ed's back. We've got to quit talking about him. Okay? So, so what happens is if we get the minerals to those plants, they can express more potential. So for, uh, for, for Leonard to get more cucumbers and more tomatoes, He's got to have the nutrients to his plants at the right time. And they all follow the same pattern. These guys are not helter-skelter. They're all following the same pattern. A little phos, a little nitrogen, and just before they go in to this growth stage to reproduction stage, plants have two stages, okay? They're a lot like men. You grow and you reproduce. That's our job, okay? Plants are the same way. That's their drive, okay? We're supposed to be nice in between, okay? But plants do this. And so the minerals operate the amount of growth we get. They operate the amount of reproduction we get, okay? Oh, it's here. Okay, all of these, barley, it's the same thing this major potassium spike is going to happen, okay? Now, all right, here's some good old Montana wheat. This is, this is, this has got to be under one of Ed's pivots. <coughs> okay, this was, these were, I think, were in 2000 and, let's see, these were probably 15 or 16. What's that? 
the next slide will be reviewed. Okay. Okay. So this was 2015, this was 2014. Okay? And so you can start to see when we can start to produce a five inch head, we're getting pretty good kernels in that thing. Okay, this was our 14 wheat. Okay, we're a little better in 15 than we were in 14. And we're gonna look at the soil samples off of these fields. Okay, what, what we're doing. Okay, this is in 2000, uh, this was uh, 17. We gotta change that, Mike. 2017, okay. Okay, this was what they've been feeding their older chickens uh, as of in January, we were still at 77% production on the, okay? This is our, got to change this to 17. We'll get her, okay? Do we recognize that guy? Well, if it's 18, he's always, that must be God. Yeah, the sun's <laughs> dry. <laughs> well, the reason that we put this in. Is that your winter barn? Is look, he kneeling? <laughs> Yeah, but the reason that we took the pitcher wasn't because the barley was chest high. What is this, Ed? When did you plant that? The winter. Oh, this this was your spring durum here. Yeah. Okay. So why did we take that pitcher? The green. Green. Look at the green color in that Durham. That is not a cloud. That is the most brilliant dark green blue Durham I think I've ever seen. And the sample of the Durham is 100% Durham sample. Was the seed treated with the bivalent, both winter barley and the durum? Mm hmm Yep. Is this feed barley? Yeah, it's feed, that's winter feed barley. Yeah. I don't know, right? 